Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You're currently watching My Media Prime TV. We are broadcasting live from the economic capital of Cameroon, Douala. Good evening, Mireke Nidia. Bonsoir, Cynthia Zanye. Bonsoir à tous. Merci à vous d'honorer votre rituel de l'information sur My Media Prime Télévision. Et sans plus tarder, nous terminons cette première partie avec toi, Cynthia Zanye. Ladies and gentlemen, we begin this news cards with a sad story of a 31-year-old lady who has reportedly been, been assaulted by unidentified armed men in the littoral region, precisely in Douala. This lady is said to have been going back to her residence before this unfortunate incident happened. Nicole Tako completes the story. A 31-year-old lady who is a waitress at a snack bar in Douala named Aristide has been reportedly assaulted to death in Douala, littoral region of the country. Reports say the lady was attacked by unidentified armed men and killed on her way back home after work. She advertised drinks in the cities of Douala and Yaoundé. And that night, she went to attend a meeting with her friends. On arrival, she was attacked and assaulted by unidentified men. The family of the lady said the death of their daughter is far from being an attack. On the arrival of the cops in the West region, just observing her body brought doubt in their minds because her phone and bag were not touched, no blood on her body and no traces of wounds. Le corps arrive. When the cops arrived, we opened the back boot of the car. I was the first person to take off her dress to confirm if it was an attack, according to what we were told. Surprisingly, there were no traces of wounds or bruises on her body. How can they say she was stabbed or assaulted? Il n'y a pas de trace de, de couteau. Worried on the real circumstances surrounding the death of their daughter, the family has demanded that a thorough investigation be carried out in order for justice to prevail. Meanwhile, the corpse of the lady has been kept at the mortuary in the Presbyterian Hospital in Banjun. And now the United Nations has assured emergency assistance to the internally displaced population and the refugees in the far north region of the country after they were affected by intertribal wars and the Boko Haram insurgency. My media prime news desk tells us more. Internally displaced persons and refugees in the far north region of the country have appealed for support due to intertribal conflict, which has been raging this region for a while now. I was selling sugar. I had everything that I needed and was managing my business. When I fled, I left everything behind and just took the children. However, the United Nations Refugee Agency has assured emergency assistance to this displaced population. Children go to the schools of the local community and they use the health centers of the local community, which are insufficient. So we need to strengthen the local community. So when these people go away, this will remain as an investment, as a development investment. The fight against the Boko Haram insurgency has also affected the economic, social and political situation of this region. We have to support that reconciliation as well, because without reconciliation and without reconstruction, People will not go back and they will. it will become a protracted humanitarian problem. We have to avoid that. It is worth noting that over 100,000 people have been displaced and fled to the neighboring countries since the crisis began. C'est la saison des pluies abondantes au Cameroun, des fortes pluies qui entraînent des inondations. Les activités commerciales et les déplacements ne sont plus choses évidentes. Une situation difficile pour les habitants du quartier Centre-Équestre dans l'arrondissement de Douala 4e. Reportage signé Audrey Zatsa. D'eau, un bassin de boue, c'est le décor actuel au Cameroun, à Bonabéry, Douala 4e, précisément au quartier Centre-Équestre, en cette saison de pluie abondante. Le bitume a cédé la place aux eaux stagnantes, rendant la circulation difficile. Une saison que craignent les habitants et commerçants d'ici, car les activités sont au ralenti. Mais la saison de pluie là est dure jusqu'à maintenant, mais, mais je vais d'abord quand même battre. Parce que mais je viens seulement d'abord, je travaille même dans la nuit et je travaille dans la journée un peu. Mais parce que la pluie là, ça ne donne pas. Pendant la saison de... 
Le climat a été quelque peu favorable ce samedi 2 juillet avec la sortie du soleil, mais ici au petit marché Baoba, les commerçantes sont sur le qui-vive. C'est le cas pour cette vendeuse de vêtements friperie. Oui. Moi, j'utilise le plastique mmh. pour couvrir les habits. Parce que tu peux vous-même savez qu'à ce moment de pluie, c'est les habits. Si tu laisses ça se mouille, ça, ça donne la morsure. Donc pendant la pluie, je couvre ça. Après la pluie, j'enlève le, le, le plastique. Donc j'utilise un moyen de bon le plastique. Si la saison pluvieuse cause problème, elle a quand même du bon. Pareil pour les autres saisons, Martel, une autre vendeuse. La pluie, c'est bien mieux. Parce que ça fait grandir. Nous devons manger les, les pistaches, le manioc qu'on fait là. Mais quand nous on voyage pour aller, on a trop de problèmes. Pour payer la marchandise, tu manges que dans la pluie. Tu fais tout dans la pluie, tu vends dans la pluie. Il est à préciser que le littoral est la région la plus arrosée et humide du Cameroun. Selon la carte graphique climatique de la capitale économique, Douala est tropical, chaud toute l'année, avec une saison sèche de décembre à février et une longue saison de pluie de mars à novembre, sans oublier des pluies très abondantes de juin à octobre. Les populations sont donc sur leur garde. Still in the littoral region, a four-day streaming workshop seminar has been organized in Douala by Human Rights Defenders Network in Central Africa, REDAC. This seminar held on the 28th of June to the 1st of July was aimed at training young women defenders and journalists on physical protection, online security and more, as Mwanze Njogyogo tells us in the following report. Empowering human rights defenders, young women defenders and journalists on physical protection, data and online security manual, and improve their working environment is the objective of the four days training organized by Human Rights Defenders Network in Central Africa, Red Hack, in Cameroon's economic capital, Douala. Because we are in a country where there are conflicts and so on, and if you are a human rights defender and you don't have uh, sufficient knowledge and so on, you will not do your work very well. So we think it, it is better for a human rights defenders to know about all the right, uh, good decisions, knowing the rights and knowing the limits, knowing uh, what he or she has to do. Also added is the fact that in an environment today which is very risky for everybody because the state is not ready to protect us especially citizens of the civil society. So this is, we need double protection for the state we don't have from ourselves. The training saw the attendance of 30 advocates from the various regions of Cameroon. We encounter a lot of risks daily as human rights defenders, as even some authorities consider us as enemies. This formation was really beneficial to us as presently. We are well trained to defend human rights, no matter the difficulty we might come across in the field. At the end of this workshop, participants were accorded certificates with the hope that all that was acquired during this training will come into use. Quest for the restitution and the female figure and founder of Nso Fondom, Ngonso, has yielded fruit. This news was this news of its return was made public by the Foundation Board of the Prussian Cultural Heritage on June 27, 2022. Queen Tafon tells us in the following report. After over 120 years away from Sao and original habitat, the female figure and founder of Sao Odina Stingonso, a statue covered in seashells, is set to return home. Taken away by the Germans during the colonial era, German authorities announced on June 27, 2022, it will be handing back the Ngongso statue to the people of Sao Fondom. What exactly is Ngongso? Valerie Bidzunyoy, one of those residing in Germany, who 
who spearheaded a campaign for the restitution of the stolen artifact, explains. So Ngonso is a statue representative of Ngonso, the matriarch founder of the top kingdom of Cameroon, the northwest region of Cameroon, the Tika, uh, tribe. The campaign Bring Bang Gongso was launched in September 2021 during the Humboldt Forum in Berlin, Germany, where the sculpture is being exhibited. The return of the artifact has been described as a step towards identity restoration of the Sot people. This restitution claim is that first, it's a step towards identity restoration. So the Sot people know that the Gongso effigy is central in the identity as the Nsop Kingdom, in what it means to be Nsop, in our identity, in our renaissance and everything. And that's why it's very important. Its restitution means we're reclaiming identity. Also, secondly, it means that we are beginning the long step towards dialoguing through the difficult uh, histories of colonialism, not just for Nsop people alone, but also for other ethnic groups that had difficult encounters with Germans. You the news from the Prussian cultural heritage of its return has left so people with a lot of excitement as it has been making headlines on the social media handles of most of them home and abroad. The Ngong Sot statue, now set to return to its original abbot, has been successful thanks to the efforts made by Njobati CV who launched the Bring Back Sot campaign. The artifact, taken from the Sot people in the Bui division of the Northwest region by the Germans, is just one of several other priceless heritage stuck in Europe. <laughs>Cet atelier de quatre jours, qui s'est refermé ce vendredi 1er juillet 2022, tombe à point nommé au vu des difficultés que traversent ces acteurs. Bon, nous avons beaucoup de risques au quotidien. En tant que défenseur de droits humains, ce n'est pas facile. Car une partie des autorités considère déjà le défenseur de droits humains comme le propre ennemi. Et c'est exactement ce genre de cas dont nous faisons ce genre de cas dont nous faisons face dans, notre, dans le grand septentrion en général. Une initiative dite fructueuse selon les participants qui se disent prêts à mieux aborder leurs activités. J'ai suivi avec beaucoup d'intérêt cette formation qui est très bénéfique pour moi parce que nous avons discuté des outils majeurs qui vont nous permettre de faire face, comme vous l'avez dit, à plusieurs défis qui sont sur le terrain. Non, euh, les, 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 les formation est vraiment bénéfique à notre égard puisque à, à la sortie de cette formation, nous savons que nous sommes bien outillés à défendre les droits humains, quelles qu'en soient les difficultés que nous avons rencontrées sur le terrain. Défendre les droits de l'homme ces dernières années s'est avéré un sujet controversé. Outil de cohésion nationale, il est de plus en plus indispensable. Oh. Delegation of Agriculture has said his delegation will have an anti-corruption unit for the fight against corruption. Ntabi Jackson was speaking recently in Boya during a workshop held at his delegation by the International Governance Institute. Emmanuel Asi reports from Boya. The government of Cameroon has targets on tackling corruption in the country and the southwest region is not left out. This has been done by identifying the corruption hotspots in these ministries, especially the regional delegation of agriculture in the southwest region. 
The International Governance Institute has trained staff and collaborators of the Southwest Regional Delegation of Agriculture on the Anti-Corruption Code of Conduct. This was done in Boya recently. According to the country's representative of the International Governance Institute, there is need to improve the moral integrity in the process of acquiring and exercising public duty. The Regional Delegation of Agriculture is more critical because of the issues of food supply. Asek Stefan noted that there is need for such a training to staffs and divisional delegates of the regional delegation of agriculture and more critical because of the issue of uh, food supply and also the role critical role that the agricultural sector has to play in the stabilization and equalization of moral values and uh, other um, traits that makes us humane you know we need we, we need to have an economic statue we, we need to have employment but how deep is corruption in the agricultural sector, as Stefan tells us more? Well, I would say looking at it first of all globally from the record that we have from the National Anti-Corruption Commission, which is reliable, we can say that it's below 25%, which is also very poor. The regional delegate of agriculture noted that the training of the anti-corruption code of conduct is important to his collaborators and staff. Building capacity is the best way to equip staff intact in corruption. So the first thing we are doing is to identify the corruption hotspots. Where are the spots where corruption can likely occur? Then we design we design a plan where we, where, where we are going to identify activities which if we implement is going to help us to reduce the risk of corruption occurring in our regional delegation. The regional delegate is therefore calling on all his staff and collaborators to adhere to the new approach of the anti-corruption code of conduct so that their services can be improved to their spammers. Et en sport à présent, la FIC a foudron le contrat avec le coq sportif. Information rendue publique via communiqué de presse ce vendredi 1er juillet 2022. Jusqu'ici, aucune raison évoquée. La bière de Lyons Indomptable, quant à lui, se dit surpris par cette décision. Faisons le point de cette actualité dans ce round-up de sport que nous propose Quentin et Tempé. La Fédération Camerounaise de football a mis un terme à la collaboration avec la Corte sportive. C'est à travers un communiqué de presse que la FICA Foot a fait savoir à l'opinion nationale et internationale qu'elle a décidé hier vendredi de rompre le contrat avec l'équipe Monti, à billard des sélections nationales du pays durant deux années et demie de partenariat. Cette décision arrive dans un contexte où l'équipe nationale féminine du Cameroun se prépare pour prendre part à la Can Women Total Energy Maroc 2022. Elle prendrait effet juste après la compétition. Les raisons de cette rupture de contrat entre la fédération et la coque sportive sont indéterminées pour l'instant. En réplique à cette décision de la FICA Foot, à travers un document, le contractant déchu fait part de sa plus grande surprise et de sa stupéfaction. L'habilleur estime que cette décision est brutale car elle a été prise de façon unilatérale. La corps sportive invite donc Samuel Eto, président de la FICA Foot, à la discussion, dans un esprit constructif et respectueux des engagements réciproques pour l'heure, l'instance effetière du football camerounais, comme précisé dans son communiqué, entend explorer dans les brefs délais les pistes d'une nouvelle collaboration avec un équipement qui respectueux des contrats et fier d'associer son image au label des équipes nationales du Cameroun. Parlons à présent des playoffs down des championnats camerounais, Panthère sportive d'une D est maintenu en première division. Après sa victoire d'un but à zéro contre Yafou hier soir au stade Rundé à Dia de Garoua. C'est grâce à l'unique but de l'attaquant Sébastien Thierry Ngoumou à la 47e minute que les Huimento réussissent à faire descendre Yaoundé FC en Elite 2. À côté de ce club, d'autres vont effectuer leur descente en Ligue 2. Il s'agit de Racine FC de Bafoussam, Toné Kalara Club, New Star de Douala et Ofta de Kribi. The Cameroon's Football Federation's contract with Lokok Sportive will soon come to an end after the African Women's Cup of Nations in Morocco. This was made public in a press release which was signed by the Secretary General of FICA Food. Our reporter, Katrine Kongwe, exploits this communique and gives us details. The Cameroon Football Federation, FECA Foods, announces the termination of its contracts with French sportswear manufacturer Lokok Sportive. The information was contained in a press release signed by FECA Foods President Samuel Ito on Friday, July 1, 2022. 
The decision, according to the release, would take effect after the organization of the 2022 Women's African Cup of Nations, set to run from July 23rd. He did not explain the reasons behind the decision, but the statement hints at non-compliance with commitments by the equipment manufacturer. The president of Fekafoot plans to explore new collaboration opportunities with an equipment manufacturer that respects its commitments and is proud to join its image with the label of the national football team of Cameroon. The new Fekafoot Lecoq sportive deal was signed on June 7, 2019 in Montpellier and was expected to last until 2023. But the collaboration has stalled since the signing and the Minister of Sports, Nancy Mwele Kombi, asked for explanations from Feka Foods in October 2019. Nancy Mwele Kombi said he noted a real deficit in the quantity of equipment and sports kites made available to the national team during some major international sports competitions. Lecoq Sportive replaced Puma in the year 2019, a move which, according to many, was done under unclear circumstances. Il est connu pour avoir baptisé la sélection nationale du football camerounais les Lions indomptables. L'ancien ministre des Sports et de l'Éducation physique camerounais Félix Tony Mbok a malheureusement rendu l'âme ce samedi 2 juillet 2022 des suites de maladies. Il était alors âgé de 87 ans. Retour sur la vie de ce haut commis de l'État camerounais avec la rédaction centrale. C'est ce samedi 2 juillet 2022 que la nouvelle du décès de l'ancien ministre des Sports, Félix Tony Mbok, a été rendue publique. Il est mort des suites de maladies aux premières heures de ce samedi. C'est une perte pour le football camerounais. L'histoire retiendra de lui qu'après l'échec du Cameroun à la Coupe d'Afrique des Nations en 1972, le président Amadou Aïdjou lui confiera le choix du nom de l'équipe nationale du Cameroun. Alors, ministre en charge des Sports, c'est ce grand homme d'État qui donnera le surnom Lions Indomptables. Un de baptême que porte jusqu'à nos jours la sélection nationale de football du Cameroun. Né le 14 mai 1934 à Solibanga, dans le département d'Union et Kélé, il obtient son CEP en 1951. De 1951 à 1959, il fera ses études secondaires au petit séminaire d'Akono, où il obtient la première partie du baccalauréat, et puis au lycée Jos de Douala, où il obtiendra la deuxième partie du baccalauréat. Titulaire d'une licence en droit de l'université de Yaoundé, ce haut commis d'État a servi sous l'ère d'Aïdjo autant que sous l'ère de Paul Biya en tant que administrateur civil principal et sera chargé de mission de la présidence de la République de 1966 à 1969, puis secrétaire général du ministre du Travail et des lois sociales de 1969 à 1972, ministre de la Jeunesse et des Sports de 1972 à 1979, ministre du Travail et de la Prévoyance sociale de 1982 à 1984, pour ne citer que ceci. Le patriote décède donc à l'âge de 87 ans. Adieu, Monsieur le Ministre. C'est avec cette note de tristesse que nous mettons thème à cette édition du journal bilingue sur ma média prime télévision. Merci à vous de l'avoir suivi. Restez des nôtres. Bonsoir, Cynthia Zani. Good evening, Mary Canadian ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for watching us throughout this news edition, receiving technical assistance from Frank Eno and coordinated by Lasha Kingsley. I have been Cynthia Azano. See you tomorrow. Good night.